Hello everyone, this is David Seven Skies, and for me and Paramine, welcome to this new class. We are all really excited about it, and this is my first experience with Paramine, so uh, I'm definitely really excited, a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm sure everything will be fine, and uh, yeah, I really hope this class is going to be useful for you. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot of things, and I'm definitely looking forward to see what you're going to create after we're done with this class. So let's start with a little bit of basics before we get our hands dirty with uh, making sounds. Um, so I'm gonna state uh, the obvious a little bit, but uh, I, feel, I feel like it's, uh, it's necessary. So what is a synthesizer? A synthesizer is an instrument, of course. Um, there's a big difference, though, compared to uh, other instruments as we know them, uh, like, for example, a piano or a trumpet or a guitar. So a synthesizer basically generates sound from an electrical signal. While for the other instruments, uh, the sound is generated by a physical event. For example, a trumpet, uh, the, sound from, the sound of a trumpet is... Uh, generated from the person blowing into the trumpet. The piano, for example, is the little hammer touching the string. The guitar is our finger touching the string of the guitar, and so on. Now from here, uh, we have to do another little distinction. We have two different types of synthesizer. We have the analog synthesizer, and we have the digital analog synthesizer. So uh, what's the biggest difference? In an analog synthesizer, the signal that we have is purely electrical and every parameter within this synthesizer is actually changing this electrical signal while in a digital analog synthesizer our signal is not electrical even though of course we need electricity to uh, power the instrument or the computer um, but the signal is actually a code is uh, it's a binary code is 010101 and our parameters are affecting this signal thanks to algorithms. So basically it's a um, recreation, it's an emulation of what an analog synthesizer is. Well at this point you may wonder why are you talking about uh, analog synthesizer? Well this is all about logic synthesizers. Well as I said basically a digital synthesizer is a copy of an analog synthesizer. So basically once we learn how to program and how a synthesizer and logic works. This uh, can be also applied to create sounds on an analog synthesizer or you know any other VST that we that we have and potentially any other synthesizer that matches the same uh, principle of the synthesizers in logic. The most common one, which is subtractive synthesis, where a filter subtracts frequencies and generates harmonics that help us shaping our sound. Now, since it will be easier for you to understand our type of synthesis after I explain the subtractive one, let's go ahead and have a look at how it works and what module we can find in this type of synthesizer. So, what you see here is an actual synthesizer. Well, of course, it doesn't make any sound right now and it doesn't have a really appealing interface, but uh, basically these are the main component of a synthesizer. So uh, we have an oscillator here, which is what generates the sound. Uh, then for, we'll see in a second that it, create, it can create different um, type of waveforms. We're going to look at those, but for now let's just call the oscillator our sound generator. Then there is a filter. The filter is what filters, oh, that's, that's what it does, uh, filters our frequencies. Um, basically it will subtract, it will eliminate a certain frequency depending on the range, the range that we set it to. Uh, then we have the amplifier, that is obviously what's gonna give us the sound, right? Uh, then if you see uh, input and output, well that's, uh, the input is of course uh, our, it can be our MIDI keyboard, our uh, controlled voltage input, don't worry if you're not familiar with those, or it could be our uh, piano roll in Logic or Live or Cubase, whatever. Well the output is of course, uh, you know, line out or simply the fader of our software instrument. 
Now let's go back to our oscillator. As I said, is what generates our sound and what generates our different type of waveforms. So let's start with the basic one. It's called sine wave, and this is its symbol. You can find it in synthesizer either with this symbol or with the simple text saying uh, sine. Um, if we have to go back to logic and Let's open the ES2 for now. ES2 looks like this. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. Um, and as soon as we open the ES2, this is the sound we get, um, which for now is really uh, too advanced for what I'm going to explain. So uh, I have a preset here that is called init. Logic Pro doesn't give you the luxury of having this preset, but I'll make sure uh, it's uh, somewhere in the class. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so now we have a more basic kind of sound. Uh, we turn off all of this. Uh, these are oscillators. Uh, I'm not sure it says oscillator anywhere, but uh, yeah, trust me on this. You can see this is the, uh, the signal that I uh, just showed you. And uh, this is oscillator one. Uh, synthesizer need to have at least one oscillator. Uh, this is a really advanced synthesizer. It has three oscillator. For now, we're gonna focus on one of those. And uh, we're gonna focus on each and every single waveform. So let's start with the sine wave. And uh, actually, let me just open this plugin, which uh, sadly doesn't come with Logic. Uh, it's um, it's a really good plugin though for uh, to understand how some sounds are actually shaped. And there you go. This is. Let me zoom in. This is our sound, uh, our sine wave. So you can see it matches quite a lot with this symbol over here. Uh, and so the sine wave is uh, a really, really simple type of wave. If we look at it, well, actually, I can just switch here. Let me go up in pitch. If you see it really is only one tone. It doesn't have any harmonics. All right. Um, so yeah, this is the most basic type of uh, wave. Now the next wave is uh, called So, and uh, the name comes from the actual uh, shape that looks like a chainsaw. Well, not from here, but you'll see you'll see in a second from the spectrogram that it does look like a, like a, like an actual so. Um, so this is one of the most uh, used um, waveform to make sounds, um, especially because it has a lot of, of, a lot of harmonics and it sounds quite natural. So it's able to create uh, a lot of pleasing sounds. Let's say, let's say that. Uh, okay, so uh, I already said to uh, the oscillator to uh, produce a so wave. And there you go, sorry. Right now I'm in the, there you go. Let me go back with the zoom, maybe go out down with the pitch a little bit. There you go. You can clearly see uh, the shape and if we look at the frequencies, you can see how many harmonics this waveform has, as opposed to the sine wave that only has one. And of course you can tell that the sound is way, way brighter. Another really common uh, waveform is the square waveform uh, that I like to refer to it as uh, 
the Game Boy uh, waveform. Uh, you, you, you'll find out in a second why I call it this way. Uh, this waveform is uh, a little bit less natural. It sounds a little bit more digital, even 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 if in analog kind of synthesis, uh, but it sounds more um, less natural than the square than the so wave. And it's still quite rich in harmonics, but it doesn't have as many as the so wave. Uh, and let's just go back to our ES1, our ES2, sorry. And there you go. This is uh, the symbol that identifies the square wave. This is sound as you can tell as you can tell it sounds a little bit like you know the old uh nintendo games and all the eight beats uh kind of kind of games now at least that's that's what it reminds me uh let's anyway let's let's have a look at the shape as you can tell it matches the actual representation and uh as for the frequencies it has a lot of harmonics, but if you compare it with the so wave, we can see that basically the so wave has harmonics in the middle. That's actually the actual middle because uh, the so wave has even and odd harmonics, while um, the square wave only has odd harmonics. Moving on to the next one, we have a triangle. Uh, the triangle, it's quite similar to the um, square wave. It has the same uh, harmonics, but it roll off uh, a little bit quicker than the uh, square wave, so it tends to be a little bit darker in tone. Uh, let's go and see. Um, there you go. You can tell it's quite similar sounding. It's still it has this kind of a rounded kind of sound, but it's not as bright. Um, let's have a look. There you go. You can see the triangle. Uh, as for the harmonics, you can now watch as I move uh, to the square wave you'll see that the harmonics are actually at the exact same place. But they're simply quieter, so this makes the sound a little bit darker. Now, the other waveform that, that an oscillator can produce is called white noise. Now, this is a really, really particular wave um, because it doesn't create any actual tone. I mean, you cannot... Uh, you cannot play notes in with this with this type of waveform because uh, it has all the harmonics at the same time. Uh, all 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 of these harmonics, basically, it covers the whole spectrum. So uh, let me just show you what I mean. Uh, so in on the ES2, uh, that's another thing that I have to say. Not every synthesizer has a white noise white white noise um, generator. Uh, the ES2 does, uh, some other synth in Logic don't, we're gonna have a look at all of those uh, for now. Um, if we are looking for the white noise on the ES2, we have to go to the oscillator number 3, and it says noise, it doesn't have this, um, this logo here or this image, but a lot of, a lot of other synthesizers do. So, um, for now, let's just look at the noise text. And let me lower this because noise tends to be a little bit annoying. And have a look at how the spectrum looks. Actually, let me push it up a little. There you go, you can tell. And well, for now, look look over here. You can you can see what uh what key I'm pressing. Now I'm in C, G, 
but you can tell the sound is exactly the same. It's not the tone is not changing because because in fact there is no tone. So um, we're gonna have a look at why we would ever want to use some noise uh, in in sound design. But for now, um, just remember that the noise doesn't produce any tone. So that's about it for all the waveform. Um, one thing that maybe I should tell, because you probably saw this uh, image over here, what's, what this is, uh, once again, not every synthesizer has this, uh, but what this is, is called pulse width. So basically, this is, uh, I can show you to you better over here. This is once again a square wave. Well, now we are a little... Okay, what pulse width does is basically increase or decrease the space between one cycle and the other. So let me let me just explain. Let me just actually show it to you. Let me zoom in. So you can see the space between the cycle is even right now. Look what happens if I increase the pulse width. The sound will change and you will see that the space between uh, the cycles will increase a little. Oops, sorry. So you can see that the actual shape is is changing and let's have a look at what happens with the harmonics. By doing this, we are actually shifting the whole range of harmonic of our square uh, wave. So once again, we're gonna have a look at how to apply this and how to create interesting uh, effects. But for now, just know that uh, if you see something that looks like a sh uh, square waves, but you can see, but the the space of the cycle is uneven, that is a pulse width type of um, of square of of uh, square wave. Uh, right now, in oscillator one of ES two is. The amount is fixed, in this case, in oscillator 1. There you go. While if you want to control it, you can simply go to oscillator 2. And you are able to control it. Uh, also, there are other uh, elements for now, I would rather not focus on those because um, it's something more advanced. For now, let's just stick with our sine wave. Actually, sine wave and sine wave, this is the exact same thing, and I can prove it to you. There you go. Uh, we'll have a look at what is this later on. I'm sorry to be mysterious. Uh, but for now, let's just remember about sine wave, then triangle, so, square, and pulse with square, but for now, square, so, triangle, and sine.